Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Last week we took a look at power balancing and I'll link to the video up here. Now at the end of the video, I talked about using a commercial T product like this one to connect the power from the start and end of our string via the T connector. Now what I failed to note in there is that if you're using a 333 T, so where the all three power, the positive, negative, and data are connected at the input, output one, and output two, then you need to pull the data pin from output two, which is the, the end of the string, to make sure that we don't get data running up this line and interfering with the data coming into the prop. Now, I've done that on this one. If we take a closer look, you can see that there are only two pins in there, and that's because I've pulled the data pins, leaving just the power, the positive and negative. So I hope that clears things up and makes it easier for you. This week, we're taking a look at power injection. Now, where does power injection differ from power balancing? Well, power balancing, we're take, simply taking one cable with our positive, negative, and data from the controller to the prop. And then at the prop, we're splitting it so that the power is injected at both ends of the string, therefore balancing the power running around the string and hopefully giving us a brighter overall image and a better quality of LED output throughout the prop. Now sometimes it's not practical to balance the data using one feed from the controller. So I've got here 400 5 volt pixels connected up to our controller and our 5 volt power supply. Now if I put them on 100% white for all 400 pixels, you can see it doesn't work very well. It's good at the beginning. We've got a nice white image here at the beginning, but as the power is running through, you can see by the end here, these pixels are hardly illuminated at all. And in fact, they're only going red. And if I use my trusty multimeter, we can see that the power at the very end of the string is down from five volts to a measly 1.8. So if the prop was all in one place, then that's fine, we could power balance around it. But what if these 400 pixels are spread in a line right across the front of your house? Maybe starting at the far left, or my left, your right, maybe starting at the far right and running right the way across the property to the far left. Now, it might be convenient there to put another power supply at the far end to feed backwards up the chain to get us some brightness throughout the prop. So how do we do this? Can we simply connect a second PSU to the end of our pixel string and run it from that end? Well, we can, but we have a couple of caveats. The first is that these power supplies are designed to be used on their own. They are not designed to run in parallel where two power supplies are feeding the same output, i.e. the pixels. And that is because internally they are monitoring the output and regulating the output to make sure that it sticks at five volts. Now, if there's one, the more than one device outputting five volts, and they're working to get, they're trying to work together, they're going to be arguing with each other as to how to quite get the five volts right. And it's going to end up in something going bang. So not a good idea. 
So why don't we just cut the power in forms of the positive and negative and let one handle one end and one handle the other. The problem that we've got then is that the data in these is a user of electricity. And like every electrical circuit you'll see online, the, you'll see it goes round in a loop. So the data needs to come out from the power supply. It needs to go through the load, i.e. the pixels, and then it needs to return back to the same power supply. Now, if the data is all originating at our controller and we cut the negative, then the data cannot get back to its original source, i.e. the controller and the power supply. So we need to leave the negative connected all the way through so the data can do its loop all the way through from the power source through the controller to the pixel and back again to complete the loop and therefore get the data working correctly. The pixel power itself needs to go back to the relevant power supply as well. So the first half, we need to have the positive data and negative all connected to the first power supply. And at the far end, we're going to run a new positive in. We're going to chop the positive in the middle of these pixels. So at pixel number 200 here, we're going to chop the positive. And therefore, the positive will run this half. It will power the pixels. And it will return through its negative back to this controller. This side, we're going to connect the whole lot up again. So we've got positive coming in, running this half of the pixels and returning to this controller. And the data is going to run throughout the whole lot and return through the common negative that's connected at both ends. And that way, both controllers, both power supplies are happy because they're running their own pixels and they're not seeing another power supply on the five volt rail. Same with 12 volts or 24, it, it all works the same. But the negatives are joined throughout, so we re retain a standard set of values and the data return can get back to where it needs to go. So how does that work in practice? Well, I've got here a second power supply that's hooked up, or almost hooked up. I've not connected the power yet, just so that we could get the voltage measurement off the end. Data is still going to come in from this end and power to this half. I'm going to cut the positive here halfway, and then we're going to power the second half from the second PSU. So let's split this out. I can see the this these pixels helpfully have labeling on the string here to tell me which wire is which. So I can just stick a hole in that and pull the positive apart. And I can then snip that with my trusty scissors. There we go. And that is our positive split. And we saw the power go to this half and we saw this half brighten up a bit. And now, because these are five volt pixels and I'm running them at hundred percent, we are not going to see great values at the end of the string anyway. If I drop that to 50%, it would be better, but I need full power on to so that they can be seen under the studio lights. So let me now hook this one up and we'll get power into this end of the string and demonstrate that. So there we go. So I'm going to hook up the There we go, I've hooked up my power to that power supply, my, my low voltage. I've now just got to go and plug it in and let's see what we get. And there we are. So with the power supply connected at the far end, we've got our chop in our cable here for the power. So we've got two halves there. We can see now that the far end is getting power from this power supply. 
and the beginning is getting power from this power supply. Now again, this is on full white, so the beginning, the ones nearest the power supply are lighting up nice and white, uh, but because they're five volt pixels and I'm trying to max them out, we're seeing the voltage disappear as it gets towards the middle. But if I turn off full white and put them onto rainbow, we can see that it's working better here with the reduced power of red, green, and blue. Fusing wise, because we've separated 200 pixels over here and 200 pixels here, we need to fuse at each end for 200 pixels because that's what each power supply is running. Now I've seen people do power injection using twin cables from a single power supply and they don't worry about chopping the, the power, the positive in the middle for this because they think it's all running off power, one power supply so there's no need to chop the positive. The problem that I have with that is how do you fuse that? Because if you're running two feeds and you've fused it for each side, if one goes, you've still got your positive connection joined in the middle and one fuse goes, it's promptly gonna try and drag all of the power through the second fuse and that's gonna pop. So chop the positive, whether you're burning from one power supply or two power supplies or more, chop the positive and then you know each section is correctly fused if the fuse for this section goes, you know you've got a problem in this section and you can check your wiring. If this section pops a fuse, you know there's a problem with this section, you know where to check, what fuse to check, etc. It keeps the fault diagnosis down to a fairly simple level, but also giving you the safety of the fuses. Now I think that's going to be a good subject for us to touch on next week is fusing because everybody seems to just fuse with whatever the fuses are that come with their controller. Most controllers these days run 5 amp fuses uh, with the exception of Baldrick which runs 7.5 amp fuses. Now just because Baldrick runs 7.5 doesn't mean you can take a 7.5 amp fuse and stick it into your Falcon or your Culp. Uh, or genius because they may not be capable of running seven and a half amps per port. Baldrick clearly has heavier traces, heavier circuits on board and is capable of taking that load. But if you shove that extra load through one of the other controllers, you might find that the circuits in there cook and cause you problems. And we don't want to do that because controllers are expensive. So there we go, so fuse in next week. Quick overview there of power injection. So we powered this half from this PSU. We've chopped the positive here and we've powered this half from this PSU. We've left the data connected because the data is all coming from the controller here. We left the negative connected because the data needs a return path all the way from the very last pixel back to the controller. And the negative is connected here as well because the pixels also need a return path for their main power feed back to the original power supply. So I hope that all makes sense. If in doubt, stick a question below and I'll answer it at the beginning of next week. Have fun, take care, see you next time. <laughs>